Hi, I'm Frank Vogler with V&V Land Management and Resource Recovery out of Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm here to talk to you about Integrated Land Management, or ILM for short. Integrated Land Management has four simple principles, and those principles are in place really to help you achieve four things. To achieve project success, to do it in the shortest possible time interval, to stay within your budgetary constraints, and to avoid negative environmental impacts. This is a common sense toolkit for you. In many ways, we've internalized these four simple principles, but they'll help you raise the bar on land management, which is notoriously low in our area. They'll help you do this by selecting and demanding better contracting skills from your various contractors. Whether or not you live in our area or live in Zimbabwe or Nova Scotia, we don't care. We want the meeting to get out to you, and um, this is how we're going to do it. Okay, the foundational principle of integrated land management is this. Your land comes first. The limits and attributes of your land must govern the evolution of your project. Your soils, your aspects, your hydrology, your timber. If you don't take all of these limitations and attributes into account, you're going to get in a fight with Mother Nature. This is bad news. This is what leads to mitigation. Our company does about 30% annually mitigation. That means somebody has made a mistake, somebody has to tear it out, and somebody has to redo it. We do lots of it. It sometimes empties people's bank account. It is bad news. It is the antithesis of sustainability. And so if you do nothing right, make sure that you take your land first. Maybe the most simplistic example that I can think of regarding this is house construction. You want a driveway, you want a house seat, you want to put your house here. And very often I'll get a set of plans from a contractor or from a client. They want this house, this house on a white page, here on this big steep mountainside. That is not the way it needs to go. I highly recommend that you end up with finished renditions, finished elevations of your house. How your house looks on, in this piece of property, on this mountainside, in it, before you begin. That visualization is, is absolutely imperative. And people skip this relatively inexpensive step all the time. Frank Lloyd Wright said your house should not be on the hill, it should be of the hill. And this is hugely important. Many, many of the mistakes that we see happen because folks have not really considered the land thoughtfully. They've basically decided they have a house plan they want to they use and they're going to put it on their lot. And they don't make the changes the alterations necessary to make that house fit. That's the most cogent example I can give you. It's no different if you're trying to restore a pasture. If it's too steep, it may be better off left as resource land, as far as land. There are many other examples, but point is, your land comes first. You need to do a really thoughtful evaluation of your property and decide what that land wants to be, what it can be. Moving your house five feet one direction or the other may have a really significant impact on your future home. Moving your road, moving your wall, restoring this portion of pasture, protecting this stream area. The more you know about your property, the more likely you are to finish your project on time, within budget, and with few negative environmental impacts. So your land must come first. Number two, education. Education as the se second principle works two ways. What this means is that you need to know a little bit about what you're trying to accomplish. If you're building a road, putting in a retaining wall, whatever it is, you need to understand some of the basics involved. Or you're not going to be able to set a protocol that you believe is appropriate. You're not going to be able to choose a contractor that you think is skilled and accountable and honest. You're not going to necessarily know. You're going to be hoping and guessing. Um, you need to, people front load their learning. You'll learn a tremendous amount about what you're trying to do with just a little bit of work and it's going to pay you back in real dollars and in real time. Having said that, education works in a different way as well. It means that as your service provider, your contractor, us, we need to know about the totality of your project. We need to understand the full scope of your project. What we often see is that there are multiple subcontractors plugged in 
over a long period of time. And even if they're good subcontractors, they have a really poor interface. They don't line up together. There are weather gaps between their scheduling. They don't necessarily know what the totality of the project contains, involves. So education means that each of your subcontractors, your main contract, there's a cohesive understanding, an educated understanding of what your project entails. This is the only way to ensure a successful outcome. The third principle of ILM is planning. Planning is where you need to make your mistakes, not when boots and tracks hit the ground. Planning is tantamount to good visualization, and most people under plan. They have desires, they want to get on with it. Permits, regulations, those kinds of things are hoops they have to jump through to accomplish their goals. In most cases, we want our clients to take a lot more time to plan. We want to we want them to avail themselves of modern planning tools like digital mapping, aerial photography, good engineering. Um, in many cases, these things are required and, and they're, they seem like they're going to be expensive and that they don't yield material results. They do. And um, good planning always saves money, always mitigates negative environmental impacts, always speeds up your process. And good planning always creates visualization. If you can't visualize your project, you're just hoping that your service providers can. I've stood around at the back of a pickup truck on many occasions and seen many people nodding their head, yes, yes, we understand how this is supposed to go, oh, we've got an idea of this. And we came to find out later that actually no one really understood what was being talked about. No one wanted to ask the stupid question. Planning is where you ask the stupid question. And um, we, we just finished a mile long road here. We've been, the planning for this road took eight years. It's a very difficult, complex road involving multiple property owners. It went really, really well. It's an excellent road. Would it have gone well without all of that planning? Absolutely not. It, it, but in fact, I will say this, because of all that planning, the road was almost a letdown in terms of suspense. It just went with absolute smoothness. I've got to figure out what to do with all that stress accumulated through the planning phase. Anyway, that really should be your reaction. You want to over plan. Um, you want to be able to visualize. That's what planning is about. Okay, we're on to consolidation, the fourth principle of ILM. Now consolidation is where boots and tracks hit the ground. You've thought hard about your property. You've spent time on it. You've educated yourself about what you're trying to do. Your contractor understands your project. You've planned. You've made your mistakes in that phase and you visualize. This is where things happen, have to happen. And they need to happen with a fair amount of speed. Weather exposure costs people millions of dollars. You need to have a company that's willing to go after it. You need to put the correct equipment and the correctly trained men on the ground. For us, it means using as few pieces of equipment and as few men as possible to accomplish as many of the goals as we can with as few stagings as possible. It means there is always a qualified site superintendent on site. It means that we invoice every day. One thing that we believe in is in daily accounting. If our clients have a long wish list as well as a needs list, daily accounting allows them to accomplish some of that. They may get to the end of their project and have some money left over. They can see exactly what happens on a daily basis. Consolidation just means that you have a team that's in the game, that is focused. We don't switch crews off of jobs. Your contractor shouldn't either. They shouldn't leave your job site and come back. That's not how contracts, how projects are completed successfully. And so you need to have that team focused, you need to be there on site, you need to work from beginning to end. That's what consolidation is about. In conclusion, what I want to say about integrated land management is this. It's a tool set for you. It's a way to ensure that your project is completed successfully, and that's obvious, but that it's completed within your budgetary constraints, it's completed in the shortest possible time interval, and that you have as few negative environmental impacts as possible. Feel free to give us a call, email us, let us know what you think. We're out there. Um, if you don't live in our area, no big deal. We get hundreds of emails and questions every year. We're happy to take more. Good luck on your projects. The development of ILM 
was a natural evolution. We realized, we, we've been stunned uh -huh. as we moved away from home construction out into the field, away from that, out into grading and viewscape clearing and wall construction and forestry mulching. As we began to move outside the home, we basically realized that the standards were so low, so far below the bar that it needed to be, we needed to have a working philosophy. We realized that most people who operate machinery um, weren't well educated, weren't articulate, and didn't have high expectations for their work, and were often underpaid. When you're underpaid, typically you're not going to invest yourself in your work. And um, we need to make a change with that. We tried to hire folks from other companies that fared poorly. Some of them had lots of skill, but a low level of accountability. So the idea was to bring up our own crew of young guys. It takes years. We learned it's a slow process. You take a guy without any mechanical skills and uh, you're committed to his education. He has to be committed to the process. And for a long time, he really can't have a whole lot of responsibility. He's there climbing up his learning curve. You know, there's no way. I mean, he just has to learn his skill set before he's of value to the company. And this is the only way we've been able to do it. So ILM essentially was a training tool originally for our guys. If you're a young guy and your job is to come out and evaluate a piece of property for a road build or a site prep or a viewscape, and we've got guys out there doing this now, you need to have a tool set to do this. You need to understand the way the older guys, the more experienced guys are looking at things. And so ILM was that. We realized that our clients needed to know too that we would walk out in a piece of property and because they were from some place they've never been to the mountains and they want to move to the mountains to retire or they're just terribly unfamiliar with the terrain they needed a way to look a lens through which to evaluate plan and execute their projects as we say um, it's any philosophy will do but um, people were also spending tons and tons and tons of money wasting tons of money doing simple things wrong. And um, I can't tell you the number of clients we've had who've had to purchase additional acreage or lots to even reach their home site, who've had to involve engineers to fix the problems that have been done. You know, 30 or 40% of what we do is mitigation. When you have a mitigation job, it's been done wrong. That's one cost. It's got to be removed. That's a second cost. It's got to be redone. That's a third cost. That's a big bunch of money. And um, th these are catastrophic hits to people's finances. They're catastrophic hits from an environmental standpoint because it always involves waste. It always involves environmental degradation. And those two things seem to go hand in hand. So it's this. the idea behind this video, behind integrated land management, is to uh, bring a teaching tool to our clients, to bring it to our staff, and to ingrain it as a company philosophy. And it works, it's really simple, and it works because it's simple. You know, if you're going to, for instance, build a house in the mountains or, or um, restore a piece of property, whatever it may be, in many cases you're left to hire multiple contractors with multiple skill sets, and you're having to officiate between their level of skill, what they do, what they don't do. ILM means that we do everything. It means that we take on their project as a totality. We work with them to achieve their goals and people relax into that. They feel um, like they have a competent body that's helping them. It also means they save money. If only one person is doing all of this work, there's a really high level of accountability. We invoice every day. They can follow their project and chart their project in real time financially as it relates to what's happening on the ground. And so to work with only one company to do the, any number of 15 different things that you might do for your project, it saves you money. It saves you money. It happens a lot faster. Imagine, just take all of those 10 or 15 different tasks and put space in them and say, okay, well, this contractor can't get here until this date, and this contractor can't get here until this date. And this means there's weather exposure between those times, and probably there's not good interface even if those are good contractors, something wasn't done right to prepare for the next, and so on down the line. And so in that sense, we've closed the weather gap, we've closed the negative interface gap, mm -hmm. and um, it works flawlessly. It, it means that our jobs go really, really well.
I think that the other important aspect of ILM is the more far-reaching aspect of it, that it reaches out to the public at large, that it gets out there into the world, and that people begin to use this really simple tool set. Uh, for me, it's kind of like barefoot trimming. I trim horses' feet, trim my own horses' feet, um, and I can see the benefits of trimming horses barefoot in a, in a fashion that they're, they're born into. Horses weren't born with shoes. And so in this sense, it's just something that's been, um, you know, advocated by some thoughtful people. It's out there. It's caught on. And so I feel strongly that ILM kind of has some of that same common sense appeal. <laughs> I think that because if you buy, even on small acreages, it's hard to gain a sense of totality. One of the a really enlightening moment I had was on a farm with clients years ago, and we were up on about a four-acre gentle knoll in Tennessee, and they had a 40, 45-acre property. And at one point, um, one of the clients, as we crossed over a fence, said, I don't think this is on our property. I think this is all we have. And I understood really deeply at that point that most people don't have an appreciation of what four acres is versus 40 acres. They're not likely to get out and really spend time on their property. I'm pretty bad for dragging folks through the woods and the briars. I feel like it's super important. Boots on the ground is a really important thing. But you're trying to gain a totality, a total understanding of your property. And the mistakes I've made on my property have often been about that. You know, if I had had a topo in front of me versus just going, I'm going to put this fence line here, I might not have had to remove that fence line. I could have seen from the topo I was putting that fence corner in a place that would be unmowable. So a lot of planning can happen um, using all the modern planning tools, aerial photography, mapping, but you've also got to be on the ground with those things. Otherwise, it can just be um, kind of a distant consulting form of learning. Um, there's no way around spending that. I mean, some of the old timers I get around in the woods with, they know pieces of ground so well that it's, they know what springs have dried up and what are, you know, they, they just know these pieces of property like the backs of their hands and that knowledge is dying in favor of data. That wisdom is disappearing in favor of data. So we're encouraging people to move towards a native understanding. Every, everybody is an agriculturalist at heart. Everybody has that encyclopedic understanding of land. It's in there, it might be covered over, you might work in an office 24-7, 365. Put you on your own in the woods, you're gonna know something really quickly, maybe under duress, but you're gonna know something. And I feel like people can tap into this. I find that we work with lots of clients who are heading from urban environments back into the woods. They're trying to um, become involved in artisanal agricultural projects. Uh, in making things, supporting themselves by living off of the land. And we feel like that those who bring a really careful balance of education and planning, but also just fortitude, get out there and have faith, suck it up. That careful marriage allows those folks to be successful. And at this point in time, we've seen a bunch of folks get out there and do it. And it makes us feel proud. We're still in touch with lots of those folks. We've been involved in a number of these projects that are not only successful, they're financially successful. So that's meaningful to us. I mean, we work long hours, we work hard for our clients, and we need to feel like that they, um, that we're, it's, there's kind of a family affair there. People need to avail themselves of as many resources as they can absorb. Depending on your, I mean, if you're beekeeping, we send folks to the, the local beekeeper, John Christie, who's a font of information and, and interest. Um, we send people up to Joel Salton's farm in Virginia to see what manage, thoughtful management intensive grazing and, and integrative agriculture can do. Um, we make videos. We want people to come to workshops. We want people to gain hands-on experience. I think most people in general feel a lot happier and a lot more confident when they can do some ready-to-hand things, when they can chop wood successfully, when they can... I mean, life isn't about achieving financial success. It's about a rhythm. It's about getting enough sleep. It's about having enough good food, spending time with your kids. It's really simple things. And when you don't have recreation and you don't have balance in your life, 
no amount of financial success will account for that. Um, and I think people need to be in touch with their immediate ends. If you don't get in a fight with Mother Nature and you take some time to plan, that's really all we want to say to you. Um, we feel like that people need something to hang their hat on and they need, they need a few basic tenants that make sense to check off on their list. For us, integrated land management, um, you know, we own a good sized farm. We're trying to put it back into production right now. We've been at this for a decade or more and it's happening. It's happening, it's happening well. And we've made the mistakes um, that could have been avoided had we understood this rubric a little bit better. We've seen our clients make these mistakes. So it's not really about putting forth any set of religious principles. It's just the simplest way to co consolidate some common sense. It's kind of like sticky notes in your brain. So we like people to get these four sticky notes in their brain, hold on to them, because I, I don't know if we could, if we can skinny it out any more than just those four basic principles. Know your land, educate yourself, plan, consolidate, it's just that simple. I don't know if you can make it more concise.